Hi, my name is Seth with Enlightened Photography Excursions. Uh, as some of you might know, we're a team of professional landscape photographers here in the Zion National Park area. We, uh, we guide and teach landscape photography here, as well as uh, domestic and international workshops as well. Uh, a good amount of uh, our clients that we work with are more in the beginner or maybe beginner intermediate area. And an area that people struggle with is the post-production and of photography. So uh, this video is all about a having a step-by-step, -step, very formulaic approach to how to process your photos in Lightroom. Uh, this isn't necessarily the best way, but it's a great starting point for people who are uh, who are being eluded by Lightroom and just might not know where to start. Our photographers with Enlightened Photography, uh, many of us have moved out here for the adventure side of Utah in addition to the photography. So uh, if you're interested in seeing what we've been up to this past week, uh, stay tuned after the post-production video uh, to see what we were doing on the Salmon River up in Idaho. Okay, so let's get right into this. I want to uh, show people how to do some very basic editing to their RAW files. So if you're brand new to shooting in RAW and editing, or if you kind of just struggle with finding a good starting point for editing your uh, RAW photos, uh, this is a, a fairly decent workflow that works consistently. I'm not saying this, that this is the best way by any means, but it is, uh, it is formulaic, and if you follow the formula, you know, it'll at least give you a pretty good starting point. So this is the final image, but I want to show you how we got there. Uh, this is a sunrise shoot that we did with a client here in Zion National Park. Uh, as many of you know, we, uh, we guide and teach landscape photography uh, daily. We offer daily trips. Anyways, uh, this is the final image. This is the before. This is what your raw files look like. When you pull up a raw file, oftentimes it looks a little bit flat, a little bit dull, because you have to go in and do the processing yourself. Uh, so let's start. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work with this white slider. By the way, we're in the basic tab. This is the bread and butter of Lightroom. So we're going to go to the white slider. And as we make adjustments to that slider, we're looking right over here. Um, and we're also looking at this little upper triangle. We're gonna wait for that to turn color. So as you grab this white slider tab and you slide it to the right, boom. See how it changes color, that upper triangle? So once it uh, turns color, then you're good there. We're also gonna do that with the blacks. The black slider, we're gonna slide that over until that triangle turns color as well. Next thing we're going to do is you work on the highlights. The highlights affect only the bright areas of the photo. See there? And for sunrise and sunset photography, oftentimes you're wanting to pull these highlights down to pull back some of that nice information that you had at your sunrise. I see we have these blues and pinks now, whereas before it's white-ish. We'll pull those down, and we're just doing that based on our eye, what we like. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is the shadows slider. This affects just the shadowed areas. Uh, and oftentimes with sunrise and sunset, you want to pull up the shadows a little bit, show some of the detail in uh, those shadowed areas. And again, we're, do we're just doing this by eye, what we like. Um, the next thing is temperature and tint. Uh, the combination of these makes up what's considered white balance in your camera. Um, in RAW, you can adjust these after the fact. Uh, temp just ranges from blue to yellow. So you can kind of finesse that and find what you like. Um, by the way, we're, we're cruising through this. We're just doing kind of a, a rough job here. Uh, tint slider is usually a micro adjustment if you're uh, photo's a little too magenta, you can t pull it towards the green. Uh, if it's too green, pull it towards the magenta. Just do a little fine tuning there. Okay. Uh, to introduce these other tools to you, uh, exposure, that will just brighten or darken your image as a whole. Contrast will darken the darks and 
brighten up the bright areas. Sad contrast. Uh, clarity is kind of a, a combination of sharpening and contrast at the same time. So if, if I pump it all the way up, you'll see how edgy things start to look. By the way, if you ever have to uh, reset an adjustment on one of these, set it to, back to zero, you just double click on the button, it'll set it back to zero. So, you know, bringing it up to 15 to 21, that will add a nice little bit of sharpening for you. Um, vibrance and saturation, these both deal with the intensity of color. Uh, vibrance will affect the cooler colors more, so blues, purples, greens, whereas saturation will have a heavier emphasis on the warm colors like oranges, reds, and yellows. I'll reset that. Uh, so uh, because we had we had some pretty nice color in the sky this morning, I, and because the sky is blue, it's a cool color, that means vibrant slider. We'll work with the vibrant slider. We'll pull that up some. Okay. Now overall, this sky looks pretty bright still compared to the landscape. So I want to introduce this one tool which is extremely handy. This is the graduated filter tool right here. Okay. So I'm um, going to click that. Uh, and you get all sorts of options. You can do a bunch of things with this tool, but I just want to deal with the exposure. And if you're looking to, you know, kind of darken up your bright sky, um, that's what you're going to be dealing with. And we'll pull exposure down to you know, negative 0.68. You know, this, you can be very rough. And you click from the top and you drag down. Now that has kind of evened out our exposure a little bit more. And it's brought back more detail in the blues. That versus that. Okay. Uh, overall, the image I think looks a little bit dark now. So, like I was saying, exposure will brighten up the image as a whole or darken it, whatever you need to do to it. Maybe right there. Uh, so, I think we're looking pretty good. With the adjustments that we've done, if we hit this YY button down here, it's going to show us the before and after. So we've already taken it from here to here. Uh, and this is a nice reference point uh, to take a look at both of them and say, oh, okay, you know, that's looking a little too intense or the blues don't look right. Uh, I'm going to adjust white balance a little bit here, cool it down a little bit, bring it more into the blues. Um, Maybe something like that. Okay. So we're doing pretty good here. I want to show you a couple fine tuning tools. Um, first of all, if you look in my sky, you're going to see these little dots. If you shoot in the desert, especially, you're kind of plagued by this. Uh, this is dust on the sensor. And apparently, it had been a little bit since I had cleaned my sensor when we did the shot. Um, but there's a handy tool to take care of those this tool right here. This is the uh, spot removal tool. Click on that. Make sure heal is selected. Um, you can select the size of the little spot removal tool. All you do is click on the little spot. It's going to find an area with similar textures um, and it will just kind of heal that area. So it's getting rid of these little spots for us. Uh, beyond this, the, the one last thing I would like to show you, and this is another very handy tool, is this HSL tab. We're going to click on that. HSL stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. And what this is, is it gives you the ability to make uh, adjustments to specific colors. Now, I think that in our photo, these greens look a little too saturated. And I think that the, these orange, the red rock of Zion, looks a little bit more, uh, a little more red than what it should be. Uh, when you make adjustments to a photo, sometimes it'll throw one specific color out of whack. And so that's why this tool is very helpful. Uh, so for the greens, I just want to select saturation and pull down the saturation of those greens. So I'm just going to, I'll go back and forth so you can see these plants down here. 
So let's pull it down here. Again, just doing a real rough job. Um, also, the saturation of the cliff up here, a little intense. That might be red or orange. We'll play with the oranges. Okay, that's helped us quite a bit. Now, our sky had more color in it, though. It was a little more blue. There was more richness there. So I want to up the saturation of the blue a little bit. Maybe something like that. And one more thing in this tab is there's the hue adjustment. So sometimes a, a specific color will have kind of a funky hue, which I think here it looks a little too cyan. Um, so I'm going to take this button here. I clicked on this button and it gives us this little crosshair. Take the crosshair, put it on the place I want to adjust, and hold the mouse button down. And I'm just clicking and I'm, I'm scrolling up and down with my mouse right now. And so it's adjusting the hue. Now I just want to kind of make a, a little bit of a finessing adjustment to it and just pull it back to a more natural looking blue. Yeah, I think we're good there. So um, with all of those adjustments that we've done, we've taken it from here to here. Again, this is handy to reference the before and after because now I still think that these cliffs look a little bit too rich. So uh, um, go back to the saturation because intensity of color. I'll grab that little tool uh, that we can put on a color that we want to adjust and just click and drag up or down. And that's pretty good. I like what we have here. Um, go back to full view by using this box. Now, you know, we've got a, a fairly finished product. Uh, there's always a lot more you can do. You can play with these things for hours, uh, but eventually you kind of get your own workflow and you can, you can work through things pretty quickly. Um, once you've finished editing your raw photo, if you want to use it for something, let's say you want to print it or you want to post it to Facebook or share it with a, a friend through email, you have to export the file as a JPEG. So what you do is you go up to File, Export. You select where you want it to put the file. You know, make sure that the image format is JPEG. That's what you want. But that's going to be by default. Um, it, there's a lot of different options in here, but we won't go over that. And then you just hit Export. You can take that file, do whatever you want with it. So. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if you would like to see more uh, tutorials, we'll continue doing these. Uh, please su subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, hopefully we'll get to see you out here in Zion or on one of our domestic or international workshops. lost it dude right there yeah. <laughs> focus 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 uh. <laughs> not even close <laughs> Control of yourself. <laughs> I can't help it, dude. I love riding motorcycles. I'm trying to decide which I like better, you or my bike, and I'm kind of leaning towards my bike. <laughs> <laughs>
nice. Old swamp foot. Surgery begins. Doctors? <laughs> Nothing like a little fork removal on the south fork of the Salmon River Trail. This is Ben's uh, emergency moto repair on the trail attire. Every time. Every time.